my beloved brothers and sisters in the faith, as we continue to prepare for our upcoming observance of the Passover celebration, beginning with the commemoration of the death and suffering of our King Yahushua, as we partake of the bread and drink from the cup, beloved brethren, we need to understand the importance of what we do as we recall the sacrifice of our King Yahushua HaMashiach. What should be our purpose as we remember the suffering of our King Yahushua? Let's read the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, the verses 2. We do this by keeping our eyes on Yahushua, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith because of the joy awaiting him. He endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Now he is seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. Beloved brothers and sisters in the faith, as people of God, we need to remember and be thankful for how we became the people of God in the first place. It is because of the covenant mediated by our King Yahushua. When he died for our sins and by his shed blood, we have become the people of God. And so it, it's because of the sacrifice of our King that our faith was initiated. However, it's not enough that we simply possess faith. Our faith must continue to grow. Our faith must continue to mature and become perfected. The only way for our faith to be perfected is never to forget what brought us faith in the first place. That is the sacrifice of our King Yahushua. And so often and always we recall, we remember the sacrifice of our King as we fix and keep our eyes upon him. Because whenever we keep our eyes upon him, we are inspired by his sacrifice because he endured the cross. And we are inspired because one day we will be with him where he is at now, sitting at the right hand of our Father. And so brethren, let us celebrate with thanksgiving. Let us celebrate with praise as we honor the Father and his beloved Son. Let us stand and we shall sing a hymn of praise together. Everlasting Father, most holy Yahuwah, our God in heaven, we praise you, we honor you. You have given us your beloved son. You sacrificed him for our sake. Father, we can never thank you enough. There's nothing we can do or we can ever say to possibly equate to what you have shown us and given us, a manifestation of your love, unparalleled by anything this world has seen. Thank you, Father, because you have made us members of your own household. 
your sons and daughters, heirs together with your beloved son to receive the promised everlasting life. Mm -hmm. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to rehearse our faith as we participate in the Moedim celebrations. Thank you for showing us the understanding of your name, your name, Yahuwah, which expresses your love and faithfulness. Father, as we observe the upcoming feasts, we ask that you please bless our minds with understanding and our hearts with praise and thanksgiving. May we never ever forget nor take for granted what you have given each and every one of us. Our King Yahushua, we will begin the observance of the feast by remembering your precious death. You endured the cross for our sake. Soon we shall partake of that bread that was broken, representing your bruised body. We will drink from the cup that contains the juice, which represents your blood. We will remember your suffering and death. We ask that you please be with us. Accept the praises of your servants that we can remain faithful and loyal to you. Father, thank you so much because we will have the opportunity to be together in fellowship and worship. May you bring safely your people to the in the a venue that we're going to hold. May you please bring us safely one by one. Bless us with pleasant weather. Keep us away from harm and danger and accidents. And may you bless all those who will join us, O oh Father, through the power of the internet. Please continue to shower upon us your grace. And as we wait for these appointed feasts, may you please help us in our preparation that we might accept them with faith, with repentance, that we might receive your love once again. We believe, Father, that you will be with us as well as we study your holy words. May you nourish our faith and our hope that we can grow stronger every day as we prepare for the great day of our salvation. We believe, Father, you have listened to our prayers. We ask everything in the name of our Lord and Savior, Yahusha HaMashiach. Amen. Okay, praise be to our loving Father that we are again able to gather together to study the words of our Father and of, and of course His beloved Son, Yahusha HaMashiach. Welcome to the Logos, a Bible study program brought to you by the Assembly of Yahusha. So we'll get off where we, we, will, we will continue today, where we got off last week, which was about the ministry of our King Yahusha in casting out demons, if you still remember that episode. So we're going to look into Yahusha's healing ministry. So let's go ahead and jump to the book of Luke, chapter 4, 38 down to 39. After leaving the synagogue that day, Yahusha went to Simon's home, where he found Simon's mother-in-law very sick with a high fever. Please heal her, everyone begged. Standing at her bedside, he rebuked the fever, and it left her. And she got up at once and prepared a meal for them. So we know that during the synagogue service, our King Yahusha taught with great power and authority and demonstrated that power and authority by casting out demons, which was a ministry given to our King Yahusha as a way to show that indeed he is the Messiah, that he was given authority even over evil spirits. And so he would command them and they would be compelled to leave the host. They will be compelled to obey the voice of our king, Yahusha. After leaving the synagogue, he goes to Simon's house. And in Simon's house, he finds that Simon's mother-in-law is very sick with a high fever. And so what does he do? Yahusha rebukes the fever, and at once she got up. And what does she do? She prepares a meal for them. And so Simon's mother-in-law, at the moment she was healed, she began to stir. What a fitting reminder for all of us. We who are saved, we who have been healed, it is the opportunity to stir 
to serve our King Yahusha and our fellow men. Now, what also were the miracles of healing that was brought about by our King Yahusha? Let's read 40. As the sun went down that evening, people throughout the village brought sick family members to Yahusha. No matter what their diseases were, the touch of his hand healed everyone. Isn't that awesome? Wonderful. Yahushua, after healing Simon's uh, mother-in-law, people found out about what he is able to do. And so they brought sick family members to Yahushua. It didn't matter what sickness they had. It didn't matter if it was terminal or not. One touch of our King Yahushua's power and they would be healed immediately. And Matthew records many of these sicknesses in Matthew 4, 23 or 24, and Yahushua went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all kinds of sicknesses and all kinds of disease among the people. Then his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought to him all sick people who were afflicted with various diseases and torments, and those who were demon-possessed, epileptics and paralytics, and he healed them. And so we can see our King Yahusha was not just a doctor. He was a healer. What kind of healing was he able to do? Miraculous healing. The human body was created by our father Yahuwah and equipped it with the ability to heal itself. Did you notice that? How wonderful God created us we were created so that if we were cut, for example, the body, the bodily processes are set in motion so that we can heal. Yahuwah God created the human body for us to heal. However, what we find here in Yahusha's demonstration of healing was not simply healing. It was healing of the supernatural order. It's called a miracle. You see, Yahusha was not just a doctor. He was a healer. Yahusha was not just a healer. He was a miracle worker. That was the nature of his healing ministry. And so at the outset of Yahusha's ministry, we know he started out teaching, right? And then he cast out demons. And he also began a healing ministry. In fact, when you read the Holy Bible, you notice quite amazingly, and rather easily, you notice right away that Yahushua's ministry was characterized by what? Miraculous healing. In fact, when you go through the Holy uh, Scriptures, he healed many people, lepers, the blind, the deaf, the deformed, the crippled, the fever ridden, the maimed, the paralyzed, those with continual bleeding, those with edema. So it doesn't matter what sickness was brought to him. He was able to heal them all. Nothing would be impossible for our king, Yahusha. In fact, even the dead, what was he able to do? Bring them back to life. Case in point, we have Lazarus. He waited four days on purpose because at that point, the body of Lazarus already started the decay process. And so when he's, his body and his corpse was decaying, all Yahusha had to do was Lazarus come out and he came out. So Yahushua had power over death. He had power over disease. This was the healing ministry of our king, Yahushua. Up until the time he was arrested, he did not stop performing healing miracles. Did you know that? In fact, on the, the day that he was arrested, what happened? Luke 22, 49, 51 when those around him saw what was going to happen, they said to him, Lord, shall we strike with the sword? And one of them struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear. But Yahushua answered and said, permit even this. And he touched his ear and healed him. Do you remember this part of Yahushua's ministry? It was after the supper and he was about to be arrested. And so the high priest sent his servants to arrest him. And the disciples were there and they knew what was about to happen. And so Simon Peter got upset and he struck the servant of the high priest. His name was Malice. 
cut off his right ear. Yahushua was upset. He even told Simon Peter, the one who lives by the sword will die by the sword. He rebukes Peter. And what does he do? He heals the ear, right? He, not, he touched his ear and the ear, it grew back. It regenerated. And so this was the last miracle of our King Yahushua before he went to be crucified. A restoration of a cut off ear. So we can see Yahushua was performing great miracles. He had a healing ministry that was unparalleled throughout the world. But what was the basis of the healing ministry of our King Yahushua? Let's read the book of Matthew 8, 14 and 17. And when Yahushua had come into Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother lying sick with a fever. So we read about this in the earlier passage. This is a different account, a different perspective from a different writer, Matthew. So he touched her hand and the fever left her. And so here we get insight into what actually happened. Because in the, the uh, passage we read earlier, it mentions he rebukes the fever. This is how he rebukes the fever. Uh, he just touches her hand. And that's all he had to do. And the fever left her immediately. And she arose and served them. When evening had come, they brought to him many who were demon-possessed. And he cast out the spirits with a word. And he healed all who were sick. And so he was performing great miracles and healing those who were sick. What was the basis of his healing ministry? Let's continue reading the passage that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying he himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. And so what was the basis of our King Yahushua in fulfilling his healing ministry to fulfill a prophecy from the prophet Isaiah? What did it say in the prophecy of the prophet Isaiah? He himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. Do you remember this prophecy of Isaiah? It's a messianic prophecy from Isaiah. We should remember this passage, especially since it connected to our upcoming supper. When we rehearse and remember what our King Yahushua did for us. What is this prophecy all about? Because this prophecy is the basis for his healing ministry. And it's also the basis for our hope even today to be healed by our King. Wouldn't that be something? Right? I mean, when Yahushua was here on earth before he died, he was healing people left and right. Yahushua, after he died, sitting at the right hand of God, do you expect that Yahushua can also heal us. Absolutely. So what's our basis for that? It is this prophecy here in the book of Isaiah. So let's take a look at the book of Isaiah. 53, 4 down to 5. Surely he has borne our infirmities. And carried our diseases. Yet we accounted him stricken. Struck down by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. Crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was a punishment that made us whole. And by his bruises, we are healed. Long before Yahushua was born, the prophet Isaiah, he receives a vision and he prophesies about a servant. And this servant is going to be severely punished. Bible says what he is doing is to bear our infirmities and carry our sicknesses, carry our diseases. This is what was cited by Matthew. He says... Yahushua performed his miracles to fulfill what was said by the prophet Isaiah. The one being spoken of here is our king, Yahushua. He will carry, he will born, carry our infirmities and, and carry our diseases. How would he do that? The Bible says he was stricken, struck down by God, and afflicted. What was this pointing to? The suffering of our king. Yahushua, not only would he be crucified, we know he would endure beatings and floggings and a crown of thorns on his head. He would be beaten. He, would be, he was hit and struck in his face. 
That's why he was wounded, crushed for our iniquities. So our King Yahushua received this punishment and the purpose for why he received this punishment so that we can be made whole. By his bruises, we are healed. And so our King Yahushua, when he suffered from the hands of his enemies, when he was tortured, when he was crucified, he was fulfilling Isaiah 53. And what is one purpose? What is the purpose of our King Yahushua in doing that? So that we can be made whole. And part of being made whole includes not just spiritual healing, but also physical healing. And this is why even before the prophecy was fulfilled, Yahushua was already performing healing miracles. How much more after his death? How much more after he was crushed for our iniquities? Because he was crushed, because he was wounded, because he was afflicted. To what did Apostle Paul liken his, what he went through for the sake of our sins? Corinthians 11, 23, 24. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you. That the Lord Yahushua on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is a covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so Apostle Paul, when he was instructed by Yahushua, to the power of the Holy Spirit, was given this teaching. It was about the observance of Yahushua's supper. We know before he died, he met with his apostles, and he established a new covenant. How so? By eating the bread and drinking from the cup. And now Apostle Paul is telling us why the bread is broken, because it represents the broken body of our king, Yahushua, not only did he die on the cross and shed his blood, his body was bruised. His body went through severe punishment. And so when we partake of our share of the Holy Supper, we need to remember the suffering and death of our king, Yahushua. Because our king, Yahushua, when he gave the cup and gave the bread, when, we, when he shared the meal with his disciples that fateful evening, what was its purpose? Let's read, as they were eating, Yahushua took bread, blessed it and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them saying, drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. And so the purpose of our King Yahushua in holding this Passover meal with his disciples is so that he can initiate or establish what would be called the new covenant. We are in the new covenant. We are the covenant people of God. Why is it important for us to be in covenant with our King Yahushua? Because without a covenant, we have no promises. Without the covenant, we cannot hold on to the promises of prophecy. Because in Isaiah 53, when it mentions that Yahushua, when he took on and carried our diseases and made us whole because of his affliction, that pertains only to those who have received this covenant. This is why it's so important, beloved brethren, that we understand the meaning of the supper. It is about the covenant. If we want to be included among those who truly belong to our King Yahushua, to be his people. We need to be in covenant, not out of covenant. And the way we enter covenant with our King Yahushua, we know it is by having faith in him, so much so that we are baptized into his body. And so Apostle Paul, using this as the backdrop, gives us the instruction that we honor our King Yahushua whenever we partake of the bread and drink from the juice, because the juice or the fruit, the uh, juice from the fruit of the vine, that represents what? The blood of our King Yahushua. It's the blood 
of Yahushua that seals our covenant with him. And what blessing can we receive because of the blood of our king, Yahushua? There's great blessing. There's power in the blood. I don't know if you noticed in throughout the New Testament, it specifically mentions the blood of our king, Yahushua, and how it gives blessing to all of us, those who are in covenant with him. What are the blessings of the blood? There are several. I want to go through them really quickly. Forgiveness of sins, Hebrews 9, 26 to 28. Protection from the powers of darkness, Colossians. What else? Right and privilege to serve and worship. What else? To be put right with God. The blood that makes us right with God. What that means is we stand perfect before God, even though we're not perfect. This is called justification. Okay? What else? We became the friends of God. Isn't that nice? We have a relationship with our father, Yahuwah. Remember, long ago, because of his faith, Abraham was called the friend of God, right? Because of his faith, when he left his homeland to go where God directed him to go, when he was able to give up his only begotten son or his only promised son, Isaac, the Akedah, Yahuwah was so pleased with him. Yahuwah God calls him his Friends, we too can be friends of God through the power of the shed blood of our king, Yahushua. We became children of God in Ephesians 1, 4 to 7. And we can draw near to God. In fact, that's, this is what we need to do. Every time we worship, every time we pray, Yahuwah God has removed the barriers so that we can approach him in fellowship. What else? Every spiritual blessing. And so you notice that the blessing of the blood, the shed blood of our King Yahushua, it has given to us all these spiritual blessings, forgiveness of sins, protection from evil, being right with God, becoming God's friends, becoming children of God, become, becoming near God, all spiritual blessing. However, in addition to spiritual blessing, there's also a physical benefit. So do you know that? Because of the shed blood of our King Yahushua, there are physical benefits. For example, we will have eternal salvation, which includes immortal and glorious bodies. Because in eternal salvation, not only are we going to be living in a physical heaven, this is a real physical place, beloved brethren. We're also going to have a new physical body, which is spirit in, spiritual in nature. It's a glorious body, but a body non the less we have the eternal inheritance and we're going to be perfected. And so you notice the blood of our King Yahushua, it brings spiritual restoration. Not only spiritual restoration, but also physical restoration. So this is the principle we need to understand about the blessing of the blood of our King Yahushua. The priority of the blood of our King Yahushua is spiritual but it also leads to physical. And so it's both spiritual and physical restoration. Not only that, it begins with forgiveness of sins. It progresses towards perfection. This is why it's called restoration. There's, it involves different stages of development. And so we grow in spirit. We die physically. But one day we're going to be reborn physically. When the, tramp, the trumpet sounds and our bodies become perfected. And so you have the progression from partial to perfection. And so we need to understand that the redemptive work of the blood of our King Yahushua that was shed for our sins, it prioritizes our spiritual life in the progress of restoration. But it also offers a foretaste of physical, though not yet perfect nor complete, physical blessing that includes healing. You notice that in the Holy Bible, on certain occasions, the Bible gives us a sampling of the full blessing, which is often a, given to us as a foretaste. I mean, our King Yahushua, for example, right? When he was here on earth, miracles wherever he went. That's because he was here on earth. Even before the prophecy about his death occurred, they were already receiving the blessing of that future redemption, right? I mean, 
when the people were healed, when the people who were with evil spirits and it was removed from them, when they were receiving these miracles from our King Yahusha, that was before he died on the cross. You can see the sampling, the power of God and our King Yahusha's work oftentimes involves giving a sample of what he's going to do in the future. What we have received now, what the people received back then, all of that is a foretaste. It's not yet complete. When shall we have the complete and full blessing of the, of the blood of our King Yahusha? When Yahusha returns. Okay, that's the full manifestation of his blessing. But today and before, we have a sampling. We have a foretaste. For example, in the book of Matthew 27, 50 to 53, then Yahusha shouted again, and he released his spirit. At that moment, the curtain in the sanctuary of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook, rocks split apart, and tombs opened. The bodies of many godly men and women who have died were raised from the dead. They left the cemetery after Yahushua's resurrection, went into the holy city of Jerusalem, and appeared to many people. <laughs> This is pretty shocking to many people. It's shocking to me. This was Yahushua when he died on the cross. What happened when he died on the cross? It was a miracle that cannot be explained. I mean, how else can you explain these events? These are not natural events. They're supernatural events. A sampling, a foretaste of the power, the majesty, the glory that will take place when Yahushua returns. He just died. The work of redemption was beginning. The work of restoration is not yet here, but even at the initial outset of that work of redemption, you can already see the sampling of the work of restoration. Isn't that beautiful? Can you imagine when he died? These people, all of a sudden, what, what happened to them? They were resurrected. They were resurrected. That was a miracle. They even went to Jerusalem and appeared to many people. It's a sampling of what's going to happen in the future. In the future, what's going to happen? All those who belong to Yahushua, when the trumpet sounds, they're going to have a harpazo event. Their bodies are going to be changed and they're never going to die again. Right? That's the complete and full manifestation of the restorative work of the blood of our king, Yahushua. Right here is the sampling. <laughs> the sampler, sample and foretaste. Of what we can expect. Apostle Paul also touches upon this. And we we believers also groan. Even though we have the Holy Spirit within us. As a foretaste of future glory. For we long for our bodies to be released from sin and suffering. We too wait with eager hope for the day when God will give us our full rights. As his adopted children. Including the new bodies. He has promised us. Bible tells us that we who are true believers, what Apostle Paul is speaking about true believers, and a true believer is one who is in covenant with our king, Yahushua, and so they're covered by the blood of our king, Yahushua. Bible tells us that even though they belong in covenant with our king, Yahushua, they still have this body that we call the flesh. You, brothers and sisters, have a body called the flesh. We have that physical body. We're still in this physical body. You know why? Because we're still waiting for the full manifestation of the right and the gift that's going to be given to us when you when that last trumpet is blown. That's when we have new bodies that he has promised us. While we are still on earth, waiting for our new bodies, what can we expect? Bible says we can expect to groan. We can expect to suffer. We can expect to get sick. This is why even though a person belongs to our King Yahushua, can they also get sick? Yes, they can also get sick. Even though we belong to our King Yahushua, do we still die? Yes, we still die because we're still in this body. Sometimes when people get sick, they, one of the conclusions um, that people make, when I'm sick, it's because God is punishing me. That may be the case, but it's not always the case. 
It could be that we're sick because we still have a physical body. But from time to time, Bible says we can receive a foretaste, right? A foretaste of a future glory. This is why you also hear of many cases of miraculous healings, even during our time. You know, uh, one day I'd like to share with you many of these documented cases of people getting healed and doctors unable to explain. And these people who were healed, they claim it's because of the faith in the blood of our king, Yahushua. You see, even now, we can receive a foretaste of the glory and the power of restoration today when we have faith in our king, Yahushua. This is what we want to know. Is it possible? Can we receive a foretaste of a complete and future healing? Because in the future, healing is going to be complete because you receive a new body. Right now, if we are healed, it's only a foretaste, a sampling. And so we cannot expect we'll be fully 100% healed. We're still going to decay and die. But can we get, oh boy, just a sampling, just a taste, a morsel of that immortality? Can we expect to receive even a miracle today? We can. And the reason why is because of Isaiah 53 and the verses 5. If you notice Isaiah 53, 4 to 5, the Bible says our transgressions, our iniquities, they were crushed on the cross, nailed on the cross, so that by the bruises of our King Yahushua, we are healed. And so the Bible tells us we can hope for healing even today. However, for us to obtain healing through our King Yahushua even today, we need to understand a principle that is depicted here. Because the Bible tells us the reason for why Yahushua had to die on the cross. It's not because of his sins. It's because of whose sins? Our sins. And so if we want to receive healing from our King Yahushua, after he had already gone to the cross and paid the ultimate price for the forgiveness of our sins, then we need to show that we understand why he had to shed his blood. What was that? The Bible tells us that we are to remember our King Yahushua by remembering why he had to shed his blood in the first place. What is that? So that our sins can be forgiven. And with the forgiveness of sins, comes all of the blessing from the blood of our king, Yahushua, the one that we showed you earlier. But it begins with the blood of our king, Yahushua, shed on the cross that our sins will be forgiven. This is why we have this commemoration of the death of our king, Yahushua. It's an important event because we do this on a Passover. Why? Because Yahushua did it on a Passover. And so there's symbols involved there because Yahuwah entered into covenant with Israel basically when they had this event. They were set free because of the Passover. And so Yahushua is also establishing a new covenant with his people, with the people of the Father, Yahuwah, through his shed blood on the cross. And so when we partake of the supper, when we eat the bread and drink from the cup, what are we basically doing? We are reaffirming our covenant with who? Yahushua. You see, every time we brew the bread and drink from the juice, we reaffirm the covenant that we had with Yahushua. And why is that important? Well, this whole ceremony had a significance because of the Hebrew idiom called the Hebrew wedding, right? You see, in the Hebrew wedding, the couple is first to be betrothed or engaged in a regular legal transaction. That's called the ketubah, okay? The ketubah. And so that means they were recognized as 
basically husband and wife, even though they're not, they haven't yet performed the ceremony of the wedding. This is just the betrothal. And so this was initiated by the bridegroom. He's the one who establishes the marriage covenant as a symbol of the covenant relationship that had been established through the betrothal. The groom and bride drank from a cup of wine over which the betrothal had been pronounced. And so there is symbol um, that is involved in this ceremony. The ceremony of the Passover also was the celebration of the betrothal of our King Yahushua with his bride. What is his bride? The Ecclesia. That's us. And so we enter into covenant with our King Yahushua when we were baptized into his body. And we celebrate that betrothal when we partake of the Lord's Supper. Isn't that beautiful? This is why, brethren, when we partake of the Lord's Supper this coming Shabbat, it's like we are renewing our vows. You know how couples today, married couples, maybe after 50 years of marriage, what do they do? They have a special ceremony where they renew their vows. It's a sweet moment of affection and expression of love and commitment. And so, you know, this coming Lord's Supper, it's basically what we're going to do. We're going to recommit ourselves. And the way we recommit ourselves is through repentance, because that's the reason why he had to be nailed on the cross in the first place. And so when we partake of the Lord's Supper, we need to be repentant, repent our sins because we will reconfirm our covenant with our king yahusha who died on the cross for our sins this is why in isaiah 54 to 5 it mentions about our transgressions and our iniquities and then he goes on to say by his bruises we are healed apostle peter also uses isaiah and applies it to the ecclesia in the book of 1 Peter 2, 24, 25, he himself bore our sins in his body on the tree so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. Guess where that came from? Isaiah 53. For you were like sheep going astray, and now you have turned to the shepherd and overseer or guardian of your souls. Who could that be? Our king, Yahushua. By his wounds, we have been healed. And so what is expected of us, we who turn to the shepherd and overseer of our souls? Bible says we might die to sins and live for righteousness. Do you know in one word what that phrase means? In one word, how do you describe dying to sins and living for righteousness? In one word. It's the word repentance. Because if you ask um, what repentance means, if you go to the Hebrew and the Greek and look up the word and the meaning of repentance, it's basically a change in direction. If before one is living in sin, you die to sin. But you don't just die to sin. You live for righteousness. You see, when it comes to repentance, we don't just stop doing what is bad. We do what is good. We do what is right. Do you see that? That's repentance. And so Apostle Peter says, because we belong to the shepherd, because we be belong to the overseer of our souls, because he purchased us by means of his blood, and we entered in covenant with him, because we are in covenant with him, it's our duty to practice repentance. And so, beloved brethren, when we approach Yahushua's table, when we partake of our share of the, the bread and the juice, let us do so with complete repentance. This is why even before that day comes, as early as now, we need to be examining self. Look at ourselves and see where we have fallen short, not so that we can condemn ourselves, but so that we can improve, right? That's the purpose of self-examination. We need to examine self and be truthful about ourselves. And it's very hard to do because nobody wants to know the truth about themselves. Because sometimes truth, it's hard to receive, right? 
but it's something we have to look into. We need to look at our life. We need to look at ourselves and ask ourselves, what have I done or what am I doing that Yahusha does not want me doing? What am I not doing that Yahusha wants us to be doing? We need to ask those questions and we need to identify where we can improve so that when we renew our vow with our King Yahusha, we have the opportunity to grow and recommit ourselves, renew our vows with our King Yahusha. That's what we need to do. And whenever we do that, whenever we re re recommit a vow with our King Yahusha, especially on Passover day, which happens to be the day when we all meet together to celebrate and to remember and honor the king as we remember his suffering and his sacrifice on the cross, which brings about our healing. Do you know what that means? It means it's the perfect opportunity for us to get a foretaste of the healing miracle of our king, Yahusha. I'm not saying that the only time we can receive a miracle is during the Lord's Supper. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that the only time we can be healed is when we have the, the, the Holy Supper. I'm not saying that. We can be healed anytime. We approach our King Yahusha today. We are in need of his help. He'll help us right away. But if there's a best place and the best time, if there's a best occasion when we can get a foretaste, a foretaste, of that glory and power brought about by the blood of our King Yahushua, when would it be? Would it not be when we celebrate and honor our King Yahushua for his sacrifice on the cross so that by his shed blood, we are healed? Does it make sense? This is why, beloved brethren, if I were you, when we partake of the supper, you know what I mean? Present something to our King. If you need a miracle in your life, it doesn't have to be healing. It could be something else. It's an opportunity. When we approach him with repentance and we go before his feet with thanksgiving and praise, when we honor him, beloved brethren, when we open our hearts to him and beg him and say to him, have mercy on me. When you read the account, of the healing ministry of our King Yahusha. Oftentimes, it begins with those words. Have mercy upon me. Nowhere in scripture, nowhere, has anyone who began with the words, have mercy on me. I challenge you, read scripture and find an instance where someone says to Yahusha, have mercy on me, and they were denied. They were never denied. Beloved brethren, when we partake of the supper, and we approach the table of our king, receiving our share of the bread, drinking from his cup. Let us do so with repentance. And then say to our king, Yahusha, Yahusha, have mercy upon me. And present your case to him. And expect for a miracle. Expect for a miracle. Believe that Yahusha, though he is in heaven, he can still perform miracles because he does. And he can. But. Here's a big but. It may be that we are repenting. That's good. But throughout the healing ministry. Of our King Yahushua. What hinders a person. From receiving a miracle. Do you know what it is? What was it. That hindered. People from receiving a miracle. From our King Yahushua. Because when we approach our King Yahushua, especially on the day of Passover, on the day when we will commemorate the suffering and death of our King Yahushua, we want to receive a miracle. What could possibly hinder that miracle? Let's read the book of Mark, 6, 4 to 6. And Yahushua told them, a prophet is honored everywhere except his own hometown and among his relatives and his own family. And because of their unbelief. He couldn't do any miracles among them except to place his hands on a few sick people and heal them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Then Yahushua went from village to village teaching the people. Beloved brethren, 
Yahusha can perform miracles today. Do you believe that? You should believe that. And I believe on the day when we meet, when we have the Lord's Supper, and remember the death of our King Yahusha and his suffering, be prepared to receive your miracle, whatever it may be. Begin with repentance. Begin with asking for mercy. Yahusha, have mercy upon me. Yahuwah, have mercy upon me. But if we will have unbelief, we're not going to receive anything from our king, Yahushua. There's power in faith. Unfortunately, there's also power or lack of it, I should say, in unbelief. Beloved brethren, whenever we pray, whenever we worship, it should be because we have faith. Because without faith, because of unbelief, you notice what Yahushua said? The Bible says he could not do any miracles because of unbelief. On the other hand, when we have faith, how important is faith? Yahushua said, right, let it be done for you according to your faith. He was a blind man. Uh, he went to his house. The blind man came to him. Yahushua said to them, do you believe that I'm able to do this? They said to him, yes, Lord. And he touched their eyes saying, let, let it be done for you according to your faith. And their eyes were open. You see how. What the role of faith is. Before Yahushua healed them. He says. Do you believe that I'm able to do this? You see the power of belief. Not only does he say belief. But he also said. Let it be done for you. According to your faith. And so one's miracle. Is dependent also upon one's faith. You see how important faith is? If we lack faith, the miracle is going to be lacking. But if we have full faith, we can receive that full miracle from our king, Yahushua. And so we need to have faith in our king, Yahushua. Here's another one. Suddenly, a woman who had a flow of blood for 12 years came from behind and touched the hem of his garment. For she said to herself, if only I may touch his garment. I shall be made well. But Yahushua turned around, and when he saw her, he said, Be of good cheer, daughter. Your faith has made you well. And the woman was made well from that hour. Here's a woman. He had a, a flow of blood problem for 12 years, spent all of her money on doctors. None of it worked. And then she hears about this Messiah and then sees the garment. The garment represents the authority of the one wearing the garment according to the Hebrew uh, custom. And so the garment and the hem of his garment represented his authority as Messiah. And so he wanted to touch the garment because she was believing he is the Messiah. If only I can touch that garment. She was basically saying, if only I can sh show my faith that he is the Messiah. And so she was already believing in her mind. She was believing in her heart. That's why she went out of her way to touch the hem of his garment as an expression saying to the, the one he touched, I believe you are the Messiah. And then Yahushua turned around. Your faith has made you well. Right? There's another one. Now, when Yahushua had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, came to him, pleading with him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. And Yahushua said to him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this one, go, and he goes. And to another, come, and he comes. And to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Yahushua heard it, he marveled. And said to those who followed, assuredly I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. The one being spoken of here is uh, a centurion. He was not of Israel. He was a centurion. So he was a pagan. And we know our King Yahushua came for the people of Israel, right? But by faith, even though he was not of Israel, did he receive 
what he asked. Yeah, because of his faith. In fact, the Bible says, Yahusha uses the word amazing. He says, he marveled and said to those who followed, surely I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. He marveled. In other translation, he was amazed by the faith of this centurion. You know, do you know what made his faith amazing? Because he told Yahusha, oh, you don't need to go to my house. You don't need to do that. Because I'm a man of authority. I'm a centurion. I have servants. If I tell my servant, do this, they do it. If I tell my servant, do that, they do that. And so he says, I have faith in your authority. That you're a man of authority. And because you're a man of authority, whatever you say, your word has been said. That has enough power to, to do healing even across time. That's what made his faith amazing. Because for many, Yahushua had to be physically present. The centurion said, no, your power is so great. Even if you're not present, my servant will be healed. This is important for us too, because we're in the same situation. Yahushua is not physically present with us, right? Where is he? In heaven. That's a pretty great distance to go from heaven to earth. But if we have faith, if we have amazing faith, that healing power in the hands of our King Yahushua, it can be given to us. By faith. And this is the text that proves that. And so beloved brethren. When we approach the table of our king. When we remember. The purpose of his suffering and death. When we honor him. And when we give thanks to him. Let us do so with faith. When we pray on that day. And I'm sure you're going to pray. You're going to pray on that day. And when you pray on that day. Beloved brethren. Pray with faith. Expect that Yahushua can give and do the impossible. Expect that even today he can and will perform miracles in our life. But the question is, is our faith growing? Right? Is our faith growing? I mean, we are in covenant with Yahushua right now. Right? And I'm sure many of you, many of you, if not all of you, you have already tasted you have already experienced a foretaste of the power and glory in the healing of our king, Yahushua. We have. But the question is, are we growing because of that? Or is our faith stagnant? Why does Yahushua expect our faith to grow? Because when he performs a miracle for us, he expects us to grow in fellowship with him. Not everyone does. I mean, remember the 10 lepers that approached our King Yahushua? Yahushua responded to them when they said, have mercy on us. Yahushua healed them, all of them, all 10. But how many returned back to give thanks to him? How many? One. And then he goes to the one. Where's the rest? Where is only you who comes back and give thanks? You see, the expectation of our King Yahushua is when we are healed, when we are his covenant people, when he does something for us, he expects us to grow in faith. What's the proof? I want, to, I want you, we're almost done. I want to share this with you. The book of John 9, 1 to 5. Now, as Yahushua passed by, he saw a man who was blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Yahushua answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned, but that the works of God should be revealed in him. I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Here, our King Yahushua exposes a false assumption held by so many people back then and even during our time. And even during the days of Job. Remember Job when he was suffering? His friends were giving him advice. Oh, because of your sin, this is what's happening to you. But that's not the purpose of his suffering. That was not the purpose of his tragedy. That was not the reason for his tragedy. That was not the reason for his sickness. It was something else. And so his disciples, Yahushua, they see a man born blind. 
And so what was their assumption? Ah, the parents sin or this person sin? It's because of sin. That's why he's blind. And Yahushua exposes that belief. And he says, neither this man nor his parents sinned, but that the works of God should be revealed in him. And so we need to understand, beloved brethren, not all sickness is because of sin. Many, many of our sicknesses is upon us or in us because of sin. That's true. In fact, the majority of our sicknesses is because of sin, but not all of it. Sometimes there is sickness that we don't understand. Sometimes we get sick and we don't know the reason for it. Because Yahuwah is sovereign. Yahusha is sovereign. His ways are deeper than our ways, higher than our ways. And so we don't always know the answer, right? So Yahusha says, no, this man who was born blind, it was not his sin or his parents' sin that caused his blindness. There was a purpose for his sickness. What was that? That the works of God should be revealed in him. What was the work of God that should be revealed in him? This is what I want you to focus on, beloved brethren. In John 9, 6 to 7, when he had said these things, he spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva. And he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And he said to him, go wash in the pool of Siloam. So he went and washed and he came back seeing. Was that a miracle? Yes. He was born blind, and now he can see because of our king, Yahushua. And so, was the work of God seen in this blind man? Yeah, right? Remember? That's what our king Yahushua said. This man is sick because the works of God should be revealed in him. But here's the question. The work of God that was revealed in this blind man was it just the healing that represented the work of God? What do you think? Was it just the healing that represented the work of God? You see, we need to understand what is the work of God. Remember in John 6, 29, the work of God is to believe in the one whom he sent. Who is the one? Yahushua. That's the work of God. The work of God is for us to approach Yahusha in faith and to grow in faith in Yahusha. That's the full work of God. Him receiving the miracle so that he can see before he was blind. Now he can see that was just the start of the work of God. That was not the complete purpose of the work of God. God's work revealed in his blind man is not just for him to be healed. I mean, if you're healed but you're not saved, how are you going? How is that a, a great blessing for you? You get it? And so what was the work of God that should be revealed in the blind man and should be revealed in us? You notice the healing of that man born blind. If you notice the pattern, if you, I want you to read the book of John, chapter 9. I want you to see the progression in this blind man. 9-11 of John, he calls Yahushua a man. Remember, he was being interrogated. The Pharisees interrogated him. Did Yahusha, really hear you? And so in the interrogation process, he first called him the man who healed me. And in John 9, 17, he calls him a prophet. You see the progression? And then in John 9, 32, he calls him a miracle worker. And then in John 9, 23, he calls him a messenger from God. And then in John 35, 38, he calls, he worships him as the son of God. You see, the work of God that was revealed in a blind man. The work of God that should be revealed in us is not just for us to receive healing, but for us to grow in our faith. To grow in our knowledge of our King Yahusha as the Son of God. This is why in Ephesians it tells us this will continue, our growth. Our growth must continue. It must not be stagnant. This is why we ask you, beloved brethren, is our faith in Yahusha growing? Well, how can our faith in Yahushua grow? Well, the Bible says this will continue until we all come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's Son, that we will be mature in the Lord, measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. The Bible tells us our faith needs to grow, needs to mature, to become full, 
and complete, measuring up to the full and complete standard of our, our King, Yahushua Christ. Have we reached that standard? Yes or no? Not yet. We're growing. We're becoming mature. We keep doing this and doing this. Every day in our life, we have to be growing in our faith. But how can we grow in our faith? Bible says, by gaining knowledge of God's Son. Where can we find knowledge? How can we grow in our knowledge of God's Son? Where, does, where can we find all about the Son of God? Yahushua said, you read the scriptures, you do well. The scriptures testify of me. This is why we study the Old Testament. The Old Testament fills us with knowledge about God's Son. Because how can we grow in faith when we don't grow in knowledge of God's Son? How can we worship God's Son if we are not understanding about His character, about who He is, about the prophecies and the typology pertaining to Him so that we can grow in faith? We recognize He's not just a man. Because for many religious, for some of the religious group we came from, oh, He's just a man. Right? No, he's not just a man. He's not just a prophet. He's not just a messenger. He's not just a miracle worker. He's the son of God. So we need to grow in relationship with the son of God. This is what we need to be assured of. So that when we approach the king's table, we can expect that miracle. Because our faith is growing in our king, Yahushua. And so, beloved brethren, for us to grow in faith, what should we do? The final passage of our studies today we do this by keeping our eyes on Yahusha, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith because of the joy awaiting him. He endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Now he is seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. How can we grow in faith? By keeping our eyes on Yahusha. Well, how can we keep our eyes on Yahusha when he's in heaven? We are on earth. By faith. By faith. And so we pray to him. We study about him. We reflect upon his character. We reflect upon his life. That's what it means to keep our eyes on Yahusha. Live our life in dedication to our king. Because he's the one who initiated our faith by means of his death. But he's not done with us. Because just like the blind man, just like us, when we entered in covenant with him, he expects us to grow, to become mature, to become complete in our knowledge of him when we perfect our faith. Beloved brethren, every day, every week, every month, every year, we ought to be growing in our knowledge of our King Yahusha. We need to be growing in our love for him. We need to be growing in our faith in him. And that is the purpose of why we have Bible studies. Are we saved because of the Bible studies? No. We're saved because of our, because of our faith in our king, Yahushua. But what is the true faith in our king, Yahushua? One that grows. That's why we have Bible studies, to help you grow in your faith. And so we need to do our best to learn as many things as we can about our king. Because that shows us two things. We love him. And that we have faith in him. And so let us continue. To fulfill our vows to our king Yahusha. Because we are the bride. And as the bride of our king Yahusha. Every day. Let's look up to him. With love. And affection. And with faith. Let us stand brethren. And we shall pray. Almighty. And gracious Father, Yahuwah, we have received the message of hope because this life, this earth, this world, there's not much of it. Many people turn to government, to wealth, to leaders of many types. But you are the only source of hope and true blessing. You have given us what the Bible calls the living hope. When you gave up your son. To die in our stead. Father. 
You did not have to do it. You chose to do it because of one reason. You love us. You don't really know why. We cannot comprehend it. Because we know who we are. We are sinners before you. But still, while unworthy, you chose to love us anyways. And you gave up your son. And now we stand before you as your children. But you have not stopped your work. Ongoing is your work of restoration. You understand that we are weak, not just spiritually, but even physically. And so we grow old. We grow weaker physically. We get sick. But you have given us hope. And even in this life, a sampling of foretaste of future glory goes a long way for your people. Father, we approach you. We're not complaining about anything because we already have the assurance of your salvation. What we ask you, Abba, it's not against your will. May you again perform your miracle. May you again heal those who are in need. We need you, Father. Nothing is impossible with you. Teach us to grow in faith. Teach us to keep hoping. And when we observe the upcoming feast, may you send your Holy Spirit to comfort, guide, strengthen, and heal each one of us. Yahushua, we turn to you now. We keep our eyes focused upon you by remembering what you have done, by remembering your teachings, by reflecting upon your character. You are Yahushua, the Son of God. We believe in you. We have faith in you. Soon we will assemble as a people in your name and in honor of your name. We will remember you, the sacrifice, your death. When we do so, be there with us. What would that celebration be if you will not be there? You are the reason for our assembly. Be present in our midst. Strengthen our faith. And when we present to you our supplication, our petition, when we request from you a miracle, O oh King, may you grant this to your servants that we can all grow in faith together. Father, thank you. As we wait, teach us to repent. Help us to understand where we lack that we may grow in every aspect of our life so that we can behave and act and speak like children who belong to you. Please, Father, bless your people by sending your Holy Spirit. We ask everything, Father, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Yahushua HaMashiach. Amen. Okay, beloved brethren. Uh, thank you so much for joining us in our Bible study for today. Let's not forget that this coming um, Saturday, uh, March 23rd, we'll have our Passover celebration. It's the Holy Supper, where we partake of the bread, drink from the, the cup. Um, this will be in person in Fremont, but you can also join us uh, through Zoom, 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time in Fremont. We also have our upcoming celebrations of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, we, it's a seven-day feast, so throughout that celebration, of course, beginning with Passover, we are not to eat leavened bread. But in the process of doing that, of abstaining from leavened bread, it is really a picture, a metaphor of a much deeper spiritual application, which is that we are to live a life not according to our flesh, but according to our spirit. And so we will have two convocations, March 24, March 30, 4 p.m., and we will conclude with a celebration of resurrection, the Feast of First Fruits, March 31st, 9 o'clock a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, in preparation for this, we will continue tomorrow in our preparatory prayer, uh, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And also tomorrow, um, it's pretty mandatory for all of us to attend this first so that we're not lost 
because when we have Yahusha's supper rehearsal, we know, you know, what segment is going to follow what segment so that we know what to expect in every step of our ceremony. Because this is a ceremony, uh, a worship service where we have a ceremony, we don't want to mess it up. So it's, it, it's an orderly. We want to do it orderly so we can have a rehearsal. And in this rehearsal, we will have reminders from the word of God to further prepare us as we observe Yahusha's uh, supper. So for this is to, so this is for tomorrow, uh, 7 p.m. Pacific uh, Standard Time. So we do hope that you will be able to participate with us. Because and also remember, this is only going to be available uh, for those who are not in person through Zoom, right? Zoom, and not Facebook Live. Also, if we're giving offering, when we're giving offering, um, let's give through Zelle. We can give through Zelle or PayPal. And if we choose Zelle or PayPal, um, let us use on the entry because we can ask you for the email, right? Let's 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 put both offerings at AOY dot today instead of the old one. The old one was uh, offerings at assemblyfusion.org. So this time it's offerings at AOY dot today. Okay, offerings at AOY dot today, not offerings at AOY dot org or offerings at aoy.today.org, but as is written here, offerings at aoy.today. And lastly, if, we want, if you want to participate with us, we will be thrilled and happy to have you join us in this fellowship um, tour of Alaska. We're going to have a cruise, a seven day cruise where we will have Bible studies and fellowship meetings to grow our faith. If you're interested, please um, contact the phone number listed there. Uh, this is the flyer. I believe it's on our Facebook page and website. That way you can be included. So if you want to be part of it, uh, the deadline, I believe, um, to get it at this price is April the 1st. Okay, that is all. And may Yahuwah Abba and Yahusha HaMashiach bless all of us.